Hello guys, I thought I would give a video overview of the bike that I ride all the time on and I love very much. Um, this is a 1990s Marin Portofino road bike. Um, I think it might have been a team issue bike. As you can tell, I don't keep it super clean. I like bikes that are honest and show how much they've been ridden um, but I love this thing a lot and I ride usually about 30 or 40 miles a day on it sometimes more on the weekends if I can um, and I've had to become a bike mechanic because I ride too much and I'm sick and tired of paying 20 bucks every time I go to a bike shop to have anything done to it so yeah, it's, it's a great bike. I love it a lot. Um, if you saw my other video about the yellow bike here that I got at Goodwill, it's a work in progress. Uh, this one I actually ride every day. Um, it is a lot nicer in many ways. and um, <laughs> or I mean, it's all dependent on the rider and, and what you think and uh, your preferences. But for me... I like having these things called index shifters and so um, whereas on that bike we have these uh, down tube shifters where you can have infinitely many positions these things are pre-indexed so these shifters are meant to every time you click it they will either relax or add some tension into these gear cables here and so when you click it in, it relaxes the cable a little bit. When you, um, so there's two levers. You can operate this one. This relaxes the cable uh, one ninth of the entire range. And this one adds in some tension one ninth of the entire range because I have nine uh, uh, cogs back there on the cassette. And so as you're pedaling, when you click either one of these things, it causes the chain to jump into a different cog, which changes the gear ratio, which makes it easier or harder to um, push on the pedals. Um, and it's essentially just, you know, per rotation on the cranks, how much does the rear wheel turn? Um, and so that's what this lever on the right does. So the lever on the right operates what's called the rear derailleur. The rear derailleur is the this thing right here that actually controls which chain you're in back here. Um, so this right here is called the front derailleur and it is operated by the left shifter. Um, and you'll notice that the cable housings here do not match up because I don't care too much about aesthetics and I'm not OCD about many things in life. So uh, it's not too big of a deal for me and I like being different, I suppose. So, um, so this this shifter does pretty much essentially the same thing, except it only has two positions. It's either because you only have two chains here. You've got the big chain and the little chain. The little chain, um, being in the little chain ring up front, makes it is what you use when you're going up hills and going pretty slow. Um, and you also so little chain in front, big cog in back. I live on a hill, so that's the reason why it's in this gear right now. Um, so this is the gear you would be in to have the easiest time pedaling up a hill. Um, and so when you move this derailleur here, you can see it moves. And then when I hit the little tab on the shifter, it relaxes it. So as you're pedaling along, it moves the chain into a different um, chain ring. And this other little thing you see here that says XLC on it is called a chain catcher. Um, it's very nice to have. It's saved me many times. Um, if you've ever had a chain come off a bike, you know it's no fun and your hands get all greasy every time. So what this does is it just uh, acts as like an extra little hand to prevent the chain from falling off, um, which I've had several times happen to me. Um, in theory, none of this would happen if you have your limit screws adjusted properly but I and I do but um, it's just there's other variables at play that can cause your chain to jump off and 
Um, this is just a surefire nice way of keeping the chain on the chain ring. And if you're a weight weenie, I don't really care, but it's just a nice thing to have. Um, so you don't have to, you know, wait by the side of the road for two minutes while you get your hands all greasy and messy fixing that. Um, so one of the things that is that confused me when I was learning about all this stuff was if you've got this wide range of gears, um, isn't your chain going to have a lot of slack in it? And so there's two components need to be uh, two 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 things to note about that. So. First thing is when you are um, usually bike shops. When if you already have a bike, you don't need to worry about figuring out the number of chain links to have. Um, but if you do replace chains, which because I ride a lot, I have to change a lot of chain uh, chains. Um, you have to be able to gauge like what the proper amount is, uh, proper number of chain links, chain links to have, um, and so that involves a lot of trial and error um, but there are a lot of rules to follow too which which should <laughs> give you a lot easier time than I had when uh, I was doing this and winging it so <laughs> so I do a lot of stuff these days um, so getting the number of links in the chain correct is the first thing that um, keeps your chain under at least a little bit of tension because if you have too many links your chain won't have enough tension it'll just fall off the um, the rings while as you're riding, which is not good. If you have too few chain links, the problem you run into is you're you're placing the strain under a lot, the chain under a lot more strain, which causes the chain to wear out quicker. And in extreme cases, it probably would keep you, prevent you from shifting into um, certain gears. So that's not good either. Um, and so the solution to that is this derailleur, if you notice, has a bit of a spring to it. And so this derailleur, the rear derailleur, takes up slack. And so if you know for certain that you have the right number of chain links, but your chain keeps falling off, you might consider replacing the rear derailleur. Um, the components on this bike are pretty much all from the 90s. Um, minus this uh, crank set here which is being heavily used um, it's I, I, mean, I like period correct bikes a little bit like I don't like having carbon fiber wheels on a steel frame it doesn't really make any sense um, this does have a carbon fork though which is from the time period so this was the 90s which meant everything was better <laughs> um, although Having carbon forks from the 90s is not necessarily all that safe. I haven't had too many problems with this. No problems. Um, these wheels are also not from the 90s. They are a bit newer than that. And um, if you're serious about cycling and you want a set of wheels that just lasts forever, I can't think of a better wheel set than Mavic Seriums. I don't weigh too much, so it's not a problem for me breaking rims, but guys who weigh 220 plus are able to ride these things and uh, a lot of guys who ride professionally use these as just training wheels because they're not they're not terribly expensive relative to what a carbon set of wheels are and they just last forever I, and i've run into the back of a car on this thing <laughs> not on this bike but with this wheel set and this wheel set didn't even need to be trued afterwards so um yeah, it's a good wheel set. I can't recommend it enough. Um, these brakes are period correct Shimano Altegras. I honestly don't notice. I, I think that the brake calipers don't make too big of a difference in stopping power. If you wanted a lot of stopping power, you wouldn't be using caliper brakes. You'd be using disc brakes, which <laughs> would never happen on this bike from the 90s. Um, maybe on mountain bikes, but not uh, road bikes. There are trends moving towards disc brakes but nothing uh, too new so then these caliper brakes they do a good enough job for me that I don't have to worry too much about them um, I do have to change my tires pretty often because tires are probably the quickest wear item on a bike if you put miles on it um, along with gear cables so it's pretty often you'll find me replacing gear cables on these things 
uh, what happens if you don't replace them is the cable, and it always frays with inside this gear lever, uh, will break. And if it happens, you may need to get a new set of levers, which are very expensive. Um, yeah, so that's no fun. Um, the other thing that sometimes needs to get replaced are these headsets that keep the handlebars and the fork able to rotate freely relative to the frame. Um, the bearings inside uh, do get worn down over time. It's not a super high wear item, but it is kind of a safety thing as well. <laughs> you don't want this thing coming apart while you're riding. Um, this is a reflector thing <laughs> and a light uh, so <laughs> I can ride during the night and not look invisible to people and hopefully I'll save my life someday or not. Um, and then there's also a little tail light here which is actually a lot brighter than it looks and I carry a spare inner tube and tire irons there and a pump right there and I use look Kio pedals which are pretty good. Um, I think all pedals are about the same and then guys who care a lot about weight will complain about you know a few grams here and there so I don't have that kind of money to complain and I'd rather just get a workout and be outside and live and enjoy life and not think about a lot of this stuff but I love cycling so much <laughs> and uh, in case Oh, maybe this is another interesting thing to briefly mention is seats on bikes are pretty important. Um, you want to have a good saddle. Uh, in my opinion, Specialized makes very good paddles. They have this body geometry thing, which kind of sounds corny, I know, but um, the cool thing about it is they actually have people who with medical degrees <laughs> looking at how to best have blood flow um, in your grind while you're cycling because people like me who ride a lot um, being in those kinds of positions gets uncomfortable and it can also cause a uh, lack of blood flow and all these health problems I don't go too deep into right now but um, yeah just all in all uh, I think this is a great bike I have ridden this about a year so far I'm, and I should probably replace the handlebar wrap sometime but yeah, I'm not really too concerned about aesthetics and it works and it's keeps chugging along. Um, the brake pads do wear out pretty often as well. That's another commonly uh, common item you need to replace. Um, if you ever look at bikes and you're wondering, uh, you know, is it <laughs> the way I look at cycling is, or, or you know how clean you keep your bike? Because I don't really care about how clean everything here is and all that. The important part is to keep the drive chain clean. And so, um, keeping the chain clean, and I know this isn't, <laughs> and keeping these uh, derailers clean is also very important in terms of improving the lifespan of the equipment. If you don't keep these parts clean, so the chain rings, the chain, the derailers, these uh, cogs on the cassette, uh, these jockey wheels do get gunked up. If you don't keep them clean, your bike will feel terrible. Um, you'll look terrible <laughs> and, you, and um, it just wears out quicker. So there is actually a financial incentive to keep at least this part of your bike clean, which is the only reason why I do it. Um, also, it makes the bike feel a lot better too. Um, and also replacing these gear cables and keeping them nice and fresh is also a very good way of, and these cable housings is a good way of keeping the bike feeling good and you being happy as a cyclist. So, um, yeah. And if you have any questions, just ask. I love answering them and getting feedback. If you think this thing's hideous and I should stop, let me know and maybe I'll care. Probably not, but <laughs> see you guys.